The Golden Eagles hit the road this weekend to take on a slumping Georgetown team. Would Marquette survive its first test of its final five-game gauntlet? And back in Milwaukee, the Golden Eagle women were looking to string together three consecutive wins for the first time since November. Sports time. Now. Let's do it. Welcome to Sports Time, guys and girls. I'm Brad Galley. And I'm Robbie Shim. When the Big East schedule was released last summer, Marquette fans yelped in fear. A five-game murderer's row would be a surefire test to conclude the regular season. Well, on Saturday, the Golden Eagles finally entered the brutal stretch that will conclude their season. And it started in Washington, D.C., as the guys looked for their first road win since February 3rd. Picking things up here at the Verizon Center. Wesley Matthews coming off a game-high 24 against Seton Hall starts things off. Hot. The team was hot from three, and there's Wesley's first basket of the game. He kept pouring things on here from the corner. Wes Matthews. The team was six for 12 in the first half from beyond the arc. That's Wesley's second in the early goings of things. But Georgetown had just eight points off of turnovers. Here's two. Greg Monroe, the consensus All-American last year from high school. The freshman stud puts in two points. He finished with 13 on the day. Jason Clark here with a huge block on Dominic James. Comes out of nowhere. Marquette would lead for most of the first half, but Georgetown coming off that block would go on a 12-4 run starting with this great steal here by Chris Wright. He takes it all the way the other way for a layup, 34-29 Marquette, but here come the Hoyas. Jesse Sapp now dribbling up court. He steps back for three. Sapp was only one for six from the field. That is his only basket of the game, but it was a big three to put the Hoyas up 44-41. Closing seconds of the first half, Lazar Hayward gets the pass here and drops a three ball in from the corner. Three of his 17 on the game. He was five for 13 from the field, just one of six from beyond the arc. Moving on to the second half, tied at 44 at the half, and the Hoyas came out hot. Here's a pass from Greg Monroe to Austin Freeman with a monster slam. He finished with 16. The Golden Eagles came back and tried to counter the offensive end. Here's Jarrell McNeil saving the pass, putting it up and in for one of his nine field goals in the game. Once again at the offensive end for the Golden Eagles, Jarrell McNeil is really looking like an All-American, folks. A deep three. He only had two in the game, but there was one. Marquette is up one. Georgetown at the other end. Now Austin Freeman puts in the floater along the baseline. Burt can't get the charging call there. Count the basket. Missed the free throw, though. The Hoyas are up one. Marquette now at the offensive end once again. Wesley Matthews had 18 in the first half, only five in the second, but here's three of them. Knocks down the deep three. Marquette is up two. At this point, the Golden Eagles started to extend the lead a bit as well. As Coach Buzz approved of that one, here's Jarrell McNeil going in. Lazar has it. Nice interior passing from the Golden Eagles. Jimmy Butler up for two. He finished with eight, 67-61 Marquette. And here is the dagger, folks. With only a minute and change left in the game, Jerome McNeil, spin move, dumps it off to Jimmy Butler, beautiful pass, lays it up and in. There's a dagger. Marquette comes away with victorious in D.C. 78-72 is your final. Jerome McNeil finished with 22.7 assists and six boards. And as you can see here, Georgetown and Marquette have been headed in completely opposite directions since late January. Marquette has now positioned itself to make a run as a high seed in the NCAA tournament and towards a Big East championship. The Hoyas, however, just hoping for an NCAA tournament bid, which they are on the outside looking in on right now. Who'd have thought that after they beat UConn? The, gaunt, the team is 1-0 in the gauntlet, but Buzz Williams knows that they are all brutal games coming up. They're all absolutely brutal to me. Uh, whether they're at home or on the road, the first five, the last five, the middle five, the last one, the last five minutes, the last five possessions, uh, and a lot of them the last five seconds. Um, the, the last five seconds of the first half, we're down three. Uh, it's technically not five seconds. It was 6.1. Uh, and Dominique gets in trouble, and we have to call a timeout. And Zar makes a great play and hits an open shot to put his tie. And so... Uh, maybe it's my mentality. It could be wrong. It could be immaturity on my part. I really don't get caught up in what the media says, and I mean that not in a disrespectful way. Uh, the gauntlet, uh, the last five, the, the, whatever, whatever. Looking at the current Big East standings, Connecticut is still in first place, but only by a half game over Marquette, Louisville, and Pittsburgh. The Golden Eagles currently have a two-game cushion on Villanova in the fifth spot, which is the difference between one or two buys in the Big East tournament. This weekend's loss, Georgetown drops to 11th in the conference. Now let's toss it over to Chris, Joe, and Todd in the other studio for more breakdown of the game. 
All right, thank you. I'm here with Joel Sidkowski and Todd Warner. We're going to talk some men's basketball. All right, guys, going into U the UConn game on Wednesday, would you rather have Marquette's speed or the Huskies' height? Well, you know, I, I definitely got to go with Marquette's speed. I think speed kills, and definitely the Big East play, I know they, uh, that UConn's got his team to beat, Jeff, Adrian, all these tall guys, but Marquette's speed, I think they can really, you know, spread the floor and just really give Mar um, UConn a lot of habit. You know what, I'm going to go with uh, UConn's height because Marquette out-rebounded Georgetown 32-29. to Although Georgetown's big man, Nikita Mesherikov, got, got an early foul trouble, three fouls in the first three, three minutes of the game, and you think that rebound deficit would be a lot higher in Marquette's favor. I mean, you got to beat who stands at 7-3. He's pulling down 10 rebounds a game. Adrian's pulling down 10 rebounds a game. I mean, Burke can't guard both of them, so Hayward and Matthews are going to have to step up. i got to take UConn's height. In this game, do you think, does Marquette execute a half-court press and more pressure like they did in the Georgetown game to try to get UConn to shoot from the outside? Well, you know, they tried the U in the Georgetown game, and they kind of got burned a couple of times, and that's going to happen. You're going to take chances, but I think, you know, UConn does not shoot the ball that well from beyond the arc because, you know, they have those bigs. But I think they, it could be a, you know, a pace changer. You know, do it a little, do it like in a possession, not the start of the game, but just throw it in there and just see how UConn handle it. Without Jerome Dyson, they have Kemba Walker, freshman point guard, running the show for them. So if they can get him, cause some turnovers, Marquette can get some easy buckets. They will cause Kemba Walker to make turnovers, but although Kevin Walker, Kemba Walker is a very experienced, he's not experienced, but he's very good for his young age. And he's very fast too. And Marquette's guards cannot get caught at the top of the key at the half, at, at the half court line, because that takes away the chances of a trap or a double team on to beat or Adrian down low. So, so they should test out the half court press. But if it doesn't work, hang back. I think the key is Dominic James' ball pressure on the point guard. All right, quick, quick, quick answer, here, guys. What will be the biggest facet for Marquette in this game on Wednesday? I think the biggest facet is going to be the big three, Jarrell, the seniors. This is the seniors. They got three seniors on this team that want to win this game. This is probably one of the biggest games, biggest game of the year because it is the next game. They have right. to knock down their shots in the first eight minutes of the second half. They can't miss them. All right. Thanks, guys. Back to Brad in the studio. Taking care of Seton Hall and Georgetown was enough to bump the Golden Eagles up in both polls this week. Buzz Williams' team is now number eight in the AP Top 25 and number 10 in the coaches' poll. The other prominent teams in the Big East remain in the top 10. Pitt leapfrogged UConn at number one after defeating them earlier this week, but the Huskies, who roll into the Bradley Center Wednesday, fell only one spot to number two. Louisville is at number six, and Nova is at number 10 and 12, respectively. Looking ahead to Wednesday's matchup, things will become significantly harder for the Golden Eagles. Connecticut comes into the matchup tops in the Big East in scoring defense and rebounds per game. The Huskies also lead the conference in blocks per game, but are one and one in their two games since Jerome Dyson went down with a season-ending injury. Marquette owns the all-time advantage over Connecticut and beat the Huskies in their only trip to the Bradley Center. With only four games left on the schedule, the Marquette women were hoping to continue momentum to push in their way as they try for the big dance. Would the team be able to build on its two straight wins against St. John's? Sports Time will be right back.